Thanks for the reminder. So first, the question demands that we find the maximum acceleration, um, maximum acceleration during the journey. During the journey. Please, class, take notes. You see, when we look at the whole journey, we have acceleration here. Uniform accelerated motion. This is zero acceleration. This is acceleration. And then this is a complete deceleration. So if the question talks about find the maximum acceleration, then I focus my lens only on the accelerated parts of the motion. I hope, I hope you are clear. All right. Yes, please. I, I don't have to waste my time on where acceleration is zero or where I have a deceleration. It's an acceleration. If the question demands a deceleration, you will be told. So I'll only consider this side and then consider this side and compare. Okay, so what is the acceleration here? I just, and if you have a speed time graph or velocity time graph, the slope will give you the acceleration. So I find the slope here, which is the change in the vertical over the change in the horizontal. I also find the slope here, change in the vertical over the change in the horizontal. This part will give me the acceleration. Then I compare. All right. So if we look at the first side, A, let's assume this is A, B, slope of A. Slope of A would be equal to change in the vertical over the change in horizontal. So 20 minus zero over, over 0 0.5 minus zero. So this zero, 0 0.5 is actually one, one on two, okay? Or five on 10. So I have two on one by 10 on five. Okay. All right. So to, what is um this is four. This is four. So I have four hundred kilometer per hour or so. Mysteria. Hello. Please, is, is it 40 or 400? I'm coming. This is 20 divided by 0 0.5. That should be 40, rather. So, sorry, it should be 40. This should be 40. Thank you. Then we look at slope of, of B. Slope of V changing in this. So 60 minus 20 on what's the time? One minus 0 0.75. So I have 40 divided by 0 0.25. 0 0.25 is one over four. So we have 40 on one times four on one giving us 160 kilometer per hour square. Okay, so this is, the, this is the slope. Now I told you slope, the slope of a speed time graph or velocity time graph is equal to the acceleration. So this is the acceleration at A, whereas this is also acceleration at B. When you compare which one, which one would give you a maximum value, class? Which of these two would give you a maximum value? Slope B. Slope B. So, so certainly it is this side that would give you 
the maximum acceleration. So the maximum acceleration is equal to 160 kilometer per hour squared. That's the problem of the day. Any question? No question. The second part. Distance covered during the interval from 0 0.75 to one hour. Distance covered during the interval from 0 0.75 to one hour. Yes, really. I'm listening. Oh, please, please go ahead. Please. Mm -hmm. I'm listening. Please. Uh, why didn't we use the A is equal to V minus two over T, but we use the um, equation for the slope? Oh, we can we can use that as well. Okay, we can also use that. Let's see. Let's use the equation. V is equal to U plus A T. Okay, so A is equal to V minus U on T. But we have to segregate it to parts, this part and this part, because acceleration and acceleration. Really, are you okay? So acceleration yes. at A, what is V? Within the said um the, within the time interval, what's the final velocity? The final velocity is 20. 20. So tw 20 minus the, the initial velocity. What's the initial velocity? Zero. What's the time interval? 0 0.5. Really divide it, let's see. 20 divided by 0 0.5 the value will certainly be the same as we got. Are you okay? Are you there? All right, then acceleration at B. If we use the same equation, now we are on B. But what is it? 40. Yeah, so 40 kilometer per r squared for b what is the what is the final velocity 60 what is the initial velocity over here the initial is 20 divided by the time interval okay the final velocity goes with the time of 1 r whereas the initial velocity 20 goes with a time of 0 0.75. So we have 40 divided by 0 0.25. And it will also give us the same value, 160 kilometer per hour squared. Really, are you okay? Yes, please. Thank oh, you, Ms. Adia. Welcome. So whichever way you go, the same value. Okay, then the maximum Stay here. Hello. And please, what you just cleaned, we used um kilometer per hour. Yes, that we used that one with the negative one, and then here we use it with the negative two. Why didn't we use the same? So is it supposed to be with the negative two or with the negative one? Which which one are you talking about? The the solution that was that you just cleaned. No, you see that that. The time, the velocity axis is actually kilometer per hour squared. Kilometer per hour squared. And then this is, this is not to second, it's hour. Okay. And so you, you end up having the acceleration in kilometer per hour squared. Sorry, this is per, per hour, not squared. Is that, is that okay? Yes, please. Good. So, distance covered during the interval from 0 0.75 to 1 hour. We are looking for the distance covered within this interval. I have told you that if you have um, a velocity time graph, okay, the area under a velocity time graph would give you the distance covered. So, even, even if it's a, it's a curve, even if 
is a curve. The motion is a curve like this. The area under it will give you the distance covered. Once it's a velocity time graph. And I'm saying this because of one of the exercises I gave you, the graph I gave you. You were asked to compare the, the distance covered by the cars, car A, B, C, C. Please, can you recall? Yes, please. Yes, please. Good. Good. And one of the one of the uh, graphs is curved. But when you look at it, okay, looking at the time interval within which the question was set, the area for that curvy motion is larger than all of them. Okay. So all that you have to uh, understand is that the area under a velocity time graph will give you the total distance covered, whether the, whether the graph is a straight line, is a curved or whatever. Look for the area within the time interval. So looking at this, from 0 0.75 to 1 hour, this is the whole area. This is the whole area within the time interval set, okay? And what shape is this? What shape is this? A trapezium. Trapezium. So we use the area of a trapezium to find the distance. So a distance covered becomes how A plus B times H. What is A? It has helped me to determine the A part. What is A? The A part. Quick one. If you are ready, please share. Go, 20. B. What's the B? Yeah, quick, quick, quick. 60. C. And then the height. What is H? 0 0.25. Okay, so we have half by 80 by one on four. Okay, and look at something. This is 80 divided by eight, giving you 10 kilometers. Some of you were, were giving me this distance in meter, play is in kilometer. Are we okay? Yes, please. Yes, so that's the problem of the day. Any question? Today, I want us to, after going through one of this, in fact, we'll, we'll start a new topic. Amma, Amma, go yeah, ahead. Sir, please, I still don't get it. The distance covered. The area, Amma, the area under a velocity time graph will be equal to, or would uh, would would give you the what? The the total the, the total distance covered. Okay, so if you have a velocity time graph. The area under it would give you the total distance covered within the time interval. Am I okay? So all that you have to do is that look for the time interval. Just look for the time interval. Okay. And, and the time interval is between 0 0.75 and 1. So we are talking about this time interval. So the area with under this time interval would give you the total distance covered. And this, this area is the area of a trapezium. So use the formula for finding area of a trapezium to get the distance. So that's what is done. Area of a trapezium is given by half A, blah, 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 blah. So we identify what is A. This is the A part. This side is the A part. This side is the B part. This side becomes H. So you just substitute into the equation your values. Amma, are you okay? Yes, please. Okay. Do I have another another person? 
All right. Okay, then please let's try this question. I'm, I'm, I'm dictating, so be ready to put it down. Are we ready? Hello, are we ready? Yes, okay. please. The speed of a train, the speed of a train is reduced from 60 kilometers per hour to 15 kilometers per hour. The speed of a train is reduced from 60 kilometers per hour to 15 kilometers per hour whilst it travels a distance of 450 um, meters. I take it again. The speed of a train is reduced from 60 km per hour to 15 km per hour whilst it travels a distance of 450 meter. If the retardation, retardation the same as deceleration. If the retardation or the deceleration is uniform, find how much further it will travel before coming to rest. If, if the retardation, same as deceleration is uniform, find how much further it, it will travel before coming to rest. Please, are you okay with the question? Yes, please. Yes, please. All right. So I'm giving uh -huh. the speed of the train. The speed of a train is reduced from 60 km per hour to 15 km per hour. Whilst it travels a distance of 450 meters. Whilst it travels a distance of 450 meters. If the retardation or the deceleration is uniform, if the retardation or the deceleration is uniform, find how much further it will travel before coming to rest. Find how much further it will travel before coming to rest. All right, so I'm giving you um, five minutes to think through, then I get back to you, okay? Class, is that okay? Yes, please. 